wool press. And has it been lit down because of the rain? Yeah, along yeah, no, right yeah that's so part of it as well, yeah, being back lit down. Yeah. There's a number of questions, I'll take them in Sorry, the, the, second, the second part of that, sorry. sorry. The second part <coughs> of that is, um, this is my personal opinion, not as an officer, but it seems like you guys have a really good community and things like that, and I just wonder whether when you are away on holidays and stuff, it's say if you go on holiday maybe the day before your bin collection and you put your bin out, would your neighbour pull it in for you or something? Like that? It's just, it's community thinking. Obviously nobody wants to have burglars, there are burglars, and unfortunately there are opportunists, and I just think it would really benefit the community for people to think about other people like that. So if you spot somebody's bin stand, you think, oh gosh, just, you know, just pull it onto their, pull it onto their drive. And I, you know, I know it's not ideal, but bins are bins are bins, and everybody, loads of people have bins, and we were one of the last boroughs to do it, and those sort of issues I hope we've covered previously, and I get people don't like the bins, but from a security point of view, that's my personal opinion, but also, um, Yes, we definitely do train them and we will keep reiterating the training as people go on leave and are sick and agency staff come in to, to cover that. So, um. I was going to say, there are, sorry, sorry, there are four questions that I see and I'll take, you, I'll take you in order. Um, so that we can move on through the agenda, I'll also give Will an opportunity in case there's anything he wants to add as well. But I'll take, we'll take these four questions. If you can try and keep your questions short, and we'll, we'll try and keep, keep to the time. We've got till nine o'clock. We've all got to be out by then, so we'll, we'll go in the first person. So yeah, sorry. Um, just going to say, I live in the flats on Kingston Road, so um, on the corner of Chestnut Road. So the bins, um, we have a sort of, an, it's not an alleyway, like, uh, and the bins are all taken out. So now it's become so silly because, so on Sunday I put the rubbish out because I know by Monday the bins are filled up. Do you know what I mean? Other people are using it. It's not my, co it's not my flat, my, you know, the other flats. So it's so silly, and we, we, you know, it's going to come to the stage where I'm going to have to do it on Saturday, which shouldn't be. And B, when I come back on Tuesday from work, no, Tuesday, I come and do. Uh, so I've got the laptop, got my handbag, and everything. Then I put all the bins back because they don't put them in. So there's about four or five bins, and we're blocking like the pathway of um, Chestnut Road. So you can talk to the crews about that to make sure that they place them back. Yeah, if you can give us the addresses. Okay. So. But the only concern is about people using the bin as well, you know, like we're having to fill it up early, which is not fair. What I've noticed some people have done, they've actually got like a locking me mechanism, yeah, okay. bolted to the bin, but it kind of goes on top and goes underneath with a padlock. Okay. So, yeah, I've actually seen some of the residents have actually bought it, which does stop people to be able to open the bin. Then as long as you unlock it on collection day, Right, okay. No, it, it's, unfortunately people will see a bin, they will mm -hmm. put stuff in it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We try and make sure we uh, you share your information so that we can, we can try and solve that No, problem. thank you. Um, the question at the back then. Yeah, two points really. First of all, at the last community forum, we were sure that the, or we were sure that we were told that the bins were supposed to be dragged out to the, floor, the trucks and we used the mechanism to tip it over so that nothing was spilled. On well, the last collection at Edna Road, they took my really bin for the general waste, and because I don't use plastic bags, they tipped it into another bin and then wheeled on. So that's not being done in spite of the assurances at the last forum. Thank you for that. We'll and that the other one is that, see, there are some, uh, quite a few bins scattered around the top of Edna Road. And of course, inevitably, again, they're getting rubbish put either in them or on. Weeks of the bins collected, they weren't putting them back, yeah. and the leader of the council here said they will put them exactly back where they are. And when I confronted a man, that I had to go to the driver, and he called the other man, and that man said, "We're doing you. We do not have to put them back. We're doing you a favour. One of your officers." I do apologise for that. Obviously, well, do do something. Yeah. Yeah. He said, we're doing you a favour, we do they not have to put them back. back on your property. They should be replacing them back where they found them, which, well, is, on your, which is on your property. Well, they don't. It should be as presented well, in front. Well, that forms part of the training, sir, so we can, we can reiterate well, that. What I would say, sir, is when that happens, if you, if you can either email or call your councillors and, and log in, yeah. and we'll, we'll take it up. I don't know, I don't know where, you, where you're from, what board, but um, please do so and we'll take that. Um, question over there. No, it's really just a quick comment. Um, the level of cleanliness, I think, in, in this area has definitely improved. But I think if they make bulky waste collection, bulky item collection, 
too expensive and too difficult. Um, I think it will ev eventually lead to more fly tipping. Yeah. So I yeah, think it, it's a point to consider. No, we will consider that, and we are monitoring it. So it, ha it did. It, the, the charging kicked in in January, um, and it's obviously now June. So we are doing some work in the strategy team to see whether there's been a, 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 an impact in, in the numbers of fly tipping uh, of large items. Um, most of the fly tipping we find is, is sacks or bags by bins and things like that. But we are we are monitoring that to see whether there has been a, an impact on the on the fly tipping. Okay, well, I'm going to give um, Will from the earlier the opportunity to uh, do this anything you wanted to say, and then there might be a couple more questions. Okay, so, with us now, we basically class this now as business as usual. So, we have hiccups at the start, which we are sorry if we caused any hassle to anyone. <coughs> but we believe now that we have turned the corner and it's slowly improving. We're still in the early stages. So please, if you do have any issues, please report it to Merton, which they will pass on to us, because we always want to improve our service and help you have a happy collection. <laughs> so, <laughs> so but apart from that, missed collections are going down, which was a big thing at first. Even though some of you are still getting issues with the weavings put back, a lot of them complaints have dropped down quite significantly as well. So if any problems, just let Merton know. They will pass on to us and we'll deal with the crew responsible. We just want to say, I leave my bins on my path, yep. tiny little path, and they're always put back there. So, it's not... Well done, yeah. I'm well lucky. Done that <laughs> Thank you. What about the, the residents specifically not putting the bins in their own property and leaving on the yeah. pavement? We have got what happens about the So we um, there we have got a letter that we can send to people. Um, there from an enforcement point of view, it's a bit woolly. Um, but we are gonna be because we're so significantly past October now and the volumes of complaints have dipped. I'm not saying it's perfect, there is definitely still room for improvement across all services. We're not gonna lie. Um, that's just how it how it's gonna gonna go. Um, but we are working really hard, and that's one of the next issues we're, we're going to tackle. Well, they have had the letter, I think, but then I think when they've the, the been collected and they were left out, they, they've never bothered to take it back in. And it's renters, isn't it? I think those are the changes. Yeah. It's the, the links that yeah. they are council bins on council land, which is the public ground, so you have no legal uh, jurisdiction over them. The council bins. And that's why people can leave them. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that's basically what I read the law. Uh, if you if you have a letter that you are sending people, what's the mechanism by which someone can report it? Um, so it would be through through their council. They can't do it on the website. Through the through the they can't do it on the website yet. So it'd be through the through their councillors, and then they would contact us. So if that is a particular problem, then you take the house. Yeah, please let us know. Contact our councillors and. Maybe you know, without getting into the legalities of it, maybe it's just a quick visit and saying, okay, it's on the paper. I'll take a photo, I'll send it to him. Um, the reason why, if you just go on to streets, um, street parking and transport, and then click on streets and pavements, there's a, a button, an icon you can click on for obstruction. Yes, so, so you can put it down for obstruction of the footway. So you can report it online that way if you want. Um, what about weeds and um, gutters? Yeah, we can cover that, absolutely. So the, the contractor do four weed sprays a year. Contractually, they need to keep it free of weeds. We know it is not at the moment. Um, they did the first spray in April, and the next one is due to start in the next week or so. Um, and then to supplement the spray, whether that works, um, there are two more further from that as well. Um, but they uh, will manually be digging out sort of the larger weeds. Um, I've identified a significant number of roads yesterday on my inspections, so I'll be passing them to the streets supervisor for them to be done first. And what about the drains because of the flooding? I mean, the rain has just highlighted yeah, how many highlighted this drains this are completely yeah. clogged with rubbish and, and, and other stuff. So, do you know much about the drains, Karen? Uh, that's more of the streets, but if you... I'm sure that on the website there is a way to report a block yeah. drain. You can report a block drain, and they do do um, 
A to Z gullies, they clear. Um, there's a schedule for that. I don't know off the top of my head, I'm afraid, sorry. But they are they are required to clean the gullies. There's a flood list as well for yeah. when there's heavy the heavy. It, is that part of the Beolia contract or it is this a council? Of, it's part of the Beolia contract. Part of the contract. Yeah. We have regular meetings about that. But surely it's all about prevention. So is it better for them to be cleaned regularly to stop the flooding? Yes, so they do. The they do. So, yeah. so there's street cleansing. Um, most residential streets are currently set at a fortnightly sweep, but they are supposed to. <laughs> then you can, lock, you can lock your street as um, requiring a sweep, and we will go and inspect it as well. And um, <coughs> is that the street or the, or the um, actual. Um, the whole thing. The whole thing. It should be every two weeks. It should be every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Let watch road that even? Uh, well, all the apostles. All the apostles. Um, I know we had issues like, with it previously yeah. and it got it got resolved and it was better, so I apologise yeah. that it's fallen yeah. back again. We do see the guy that I know of in the custody in the very nice, but we just haven't got time to do it. Sorry, I um I find have another question. Um does um uh when Viola collects um, the uh, recycling waste, um, is there anything published to show what happens to that recycling? And, and is, it, is, is the recycling performance audited? Uh, yes, way? so we certainly used to have a lot of stuff on our website about where our recycling went, things like that. Uh, we, it obviously has gone down a transactional route, but we are working on getting the um, information back on the website, so that's something we can definitely publish. Um, all of the um, the figures of where stuff goes in tonnages and stuff, we do analyse that, so that information is available, um, so that can form part of the review of what goes back on the website. That's on the website. Isn't it's it? not at the moment, no. I don't think. It's there's some bits in there. Bits, bits of yeah, sort of where does my recycling go, that sort yeah. of thing, um, but not the not the figures, but the figures. And are the percentages on the way up or down? Yes, What's the they time? are on the way up. There was a big spike at the beginning because a lot of people took, took, food, uh, took up food waste um, and just because of the, the size of the bin of the card and the plastic and stuff like that. So um, it, is on, it is on the up. Um, I don't have the exact figures. I'm not sure exactly. In 2010 it was 36.7%. In 2017 it was 1% higher. The council said it, uh, next year it would go up by I think 10% to 48%. It's nowhere near that. It's uh, 38%. So you could argue it's up by 1%. It's 9% less than the uh, public uh, information that was given out. So we're only in June, so... <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, this last year's figures. So it's a whole year. They're official figures presented by the council. The service so it's change not achieved their objective. The service change happened in October, so we are not currently a year into the service change yet. So once we are, we'll be able to publish the correct figures. So I'm not disputing the figures that you've got there, but I'm saying it's not current. I asked the director what they should be today. Okay. There's a certain amount of information in the um, Sustainable Communities Scrutiny Panel page of the website. There's lots of reports on there. Uh, I suppose it's the reason why the collection rates are low, because of us, the residents, or is it because of the contaminated recycling product? Why the recycling figure's low? Um, I don't. I don't know why the recycling figure is low. Um, I don't look at the figures. Is there a lot of contamination? I there is some contamination, but there's not. We're not getting huge, huge, huge amounts of contamination. Um, if you want those sort of figures, I can probably find those out for you. Are people generally using the food waste to recycle food? There was an uptake. I don't know the exact figures of who, how many, like what the percentage of people taking on food waste. That stops all the rats and foxes and things. It's, it's because people don't want to keep it for two weeks, so they use the food waste bin. Um, okay, <coughs> we've been about 20 minutes on this item. Um, I don't think we've got any more questions, but we can we can certainly at any point in the meeting, if anything else comes up, we can take notes with Chris and. Help with feedback from Ken. Sorry. Uh, can we get that lady's name? Sorry, Claire Walsh. I'm the neighbourhood client officer for the women's group. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So the next item we have on the agenda is environmental issues. Uh, David, have you got any information you wanted to raise about uh, environmental issues? Well, I, I thought um, um, you wanted me to speak for a minute. Could you, Chris? I'm very happy to. Um, just, um, and, and you obviously can uh, interrupt me as much as you want. Uh, just for me, uh, you're the chairman. Um, just uh, I'm Councillor David Dean, but uh, I think generally from all councillors, um, we hear a lot about uh, your opinions on, on the environment. And uh, what I wanted to say uh, as an aside really is if I stood here 30 or 40 years ago, you would have been talking about the environment, but you would have been thinking about uh, lead in petrol and CFCs. <laughs> Probably uh, 20 years ago, you would have been told the European Union uh, would be telling you you needed diesel cars, they're very good diesel cars, and you must go out and buy one. Uh, then we were talking about global warming, and now global warming's become climate change. And really why I'm saying this is because it actually doesn't matter what you hear, it's all about what you think and what you do. And uh, you should encourage your councillors uh, to do the right thing environmentally, but you can do that too. You could change to 100% sustainable uh, electricity tomorrow, and it won't cost you anything if you do that. If you have a garden, you can plant a tree. If you don't have a garden, you can get hold of Merton Tree Wardens and ask them if you can plant a tree with them or give them a pound and that will help them plant more trees. Um, if you uh, wanted to change your car, you could think of getting an electric car uh, and then that would make a big difference. The cost of an electric car is different but the same as a petrol or a diesel car, it's just that you pay for the more money up front but the cost of energy is a quarter of, of um, the full cost. So there are things you can do today that can make a difference. And all I'm saying to you is don't always look to the state uh, to make a difference environmentally. You can do it, but keep nagging uh, councils as well. So that's uh, my point of view. And I think Anthony and I will take any questions if you have any environmental ones. Does anyone have any questions or points about uh, environmental issues? particularly relating to the council, I would I guess that we can feed back to the council, but more general comments we'll take as well. Um, and if not, I'm sure... Um, I just have a quick one. Um, if you do want to get a tree planted, yeah. 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 No. No, they did that for the coronation, I believe. <laughs> so it's maybe... Uh, Jubilee, I think, rather than the coronation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Not that old. Yeah. Something about royalty. So in the next decade, you might get another chance. But a tree, a, a stripling costs a pound. If you've got four in your garden, that's four quid. And if one or two of them survive, you make a significant difference. Yeah. Not just because of the beauty, but because of the freshness <coughs> of the air. If you stand on Wimbledon Common, the air is fresher. And how anyway. do you hold the, the tree wardens? We'll talk know? about it. Okay. It's very easy. It's a tree warden you manage, actually. Yeah. The tree warden. There you go. Just Google oh, yes. Merton tree wardens. They're magnificent, every single one yeah. of them. A couple more questions, I think. Okay. Um, the gentleman yeah. the can I ask um, on current plans when um, Merton Council is planning to become carbon neutral? I haven't seen anything that's specific about that. There's a difference between national government stating that the country should be carbon neutral because they have the levers of energy power in terms of transport, in terms of generation, in terms of building, in terms of planning. Local councils don't have that influence and power. They individually can make a difference, and they have written their clean air policy with what they call 70 action points. And there are cynics, and I shouldn't say I'm one of them, but those, the word action is, 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 is missing in those 70 points, but there is a, a vagueness that they will be carbon neutral. I think they have one electric vehicle today. I'd like them to have all electric vehicles, but uh, I think collectively we should work towards that. <coughs> I was going to say, the current plan for Merton Council, I understand, is to be 40% 40, 40 reduction by 2020. And I think they're currently about 33% reduction on the 2012 base level. Um, but I also understand that a new climate change uh, policy is being written. Uh, and I think that will have a much more ambitious target in it. And I think that will probably come out, or some elements of that will come out in July. Yeah, can I just come back and, and slightly dispute what um, Councillor Dean was saying? I think there's a lot the council can do. It owns buildings, it, it runs a fleet of vehicles, um, uh, it, it, it manages uh, green spaces. There's a lot that the council could be doing to move towards uh, uh, being carbon neutral. Uh, and uh, we all know now that this is um, you know, a, a global emergency. We have 11 years gone into 
all of the world's scientists. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, that I don't get it. I didn't get a sense of urgency from you in your remarks. Yes. So, so I'm, I'm a councillor, and I'm representing um, the council, and I'm not. I'm not the council. Yeah. I, I can't stand here and, and tell you my sure. opinion on the council. I can tell you what they sure. tell me. I mean, I, I'd be much more cynical, and I'm very happy to have that conversation. Sure. But um, I think the key thing is they don't have the levers of power that national government would have. Uh, well, they have some levers of yes, power which that. they need to use. Yes, That's I agree. Well, I said to you, they've only got one electric vehicle, and I think they, they could do a lot more. Absolutely. But as Anthony said, they have some. Uh, and Veolia should be having plans to move to a, uh, a carbon-free leader <laughs> as well, I would suggest. The irony at the moment is that, that they have made quite large reductions in carbon emissions from vehicles. But the way they've done that is they've moved what was their uh, refuge collection vehicles. They are now Veolia's, and they don't count Veolia's emissions. So that's actually <laughs> yeah. a lot of their... I, I, uh, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and the transfer of a lot of um, uh, social housing to housing association also takes the carbon footprint off the books. So but as yeah. David says, you know, the council is here tonight and the council offices. We, we're not the council administration, so we're, we're no, not. No, I, I, I understand that. I'm just a, yeah, yeah. a seeker after truth and Fair information. Right. I'm just passing on their information. Thank you. It's not for me to yeah. criticise them publicly. Well, it is, but not in this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> their meeting. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, were there any other questions or comments? Just one. Um, how can we convince the council to um, take environmental issues really seriously in planning? Because at the moment, a lot of the greening that we get are just tubs that may or may not be put, may or may not have plants. Um, bigger trees that are cut down during development are replaced with puny, tiny little trees that aren't properly planted and die within a year. Um, there's a lot that's, yeah, that, that's my question. How can we convince actually the planning officers, the council itself, that it's important to take environmental issues uh, seriously? And not uh, I mean, the token. Uh, sitting on the planning committee, I could say that, um, there are rules, guidelines, and laws, and it's a matter of interpretation in every single area. And uh, planning officers are only involved in applications until there's a decision. And after that, they don't really have the manpower or time to get involved. Uh, and as long as their interpretation is not, uh, uh, the government come to them and are critical of their interpretation, then they have a problem. But the council have never uh, been criticised for their interpretation of rules, guidelines, and laws. So I think it's a matter of um, you know, objecting when you don't think something's right. Uh, I accept that you do object, and uh, I think a lot of people appreciate what you do, uh, and, and try to follow that through. But the council are not doing anything illegal or wrong and have never been criticised by government for how they act. And also the laws do change. I mean, the environmental views on the, uh, planning, there's a lot of different words, uh, but they, they uh, often mean the same things every year. The other thing I'd say to look at is the council's redoing uh, its planning rules, which is called the local plan. Um, there have been various consultations on that. There'll be another draft, another opportunity to have I would say on things like that, that's important to you, so you, 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 you get involved in that kind of stuff. Um, I think I've just seen another councillor arrive, so uh, given that we gave councillors the opportunity to say who they were when they arrived, I will, I will do so. Hello, hi, my name's Councillor Adam Bush, um, and I represent the Rains Park Ward. My colleagues there, Councillor Stephen Post, at a um, school governor's meeting today, so he his apologies, and Omar Bush uh, is stuck with work. Um, cool. Uh, were there any other comments on environmental matters before we move on to highly exciting planning? No? Great. Fantastic. Thank you very much, David. Um, and everybody who asked questions. Chris, I think you're going to read through any or summary of some of the planning issues. Yes, I've had an update from Norman again, who's the, the head of our, our planning team. Uh, so it's in planning language, so I will do my best with it, but there will be terminology here that I'm reading out and don't understand. Um, but we'll go through project by project. So, uh, 557 Kingston Road, that's the Donald Church, uh, the new church with flats above. Uh, apparently, the decision letter has been issued and the section 106 signed, but no progress on the site so far. Uh, next door, uh, 559 to 589 Kingston Road, the manual plastics, and the land to the west of that. Uh, section 106 has signed a planning permission for 99 flats plus a B1 floor space has been issued. Uh, the comeback for um, 
pre-application for development of the same site but with more flats. Uh, so that's, uh, they're getting advice on that at the moment, I think, but there's a, a, a we'll be in the notes, but there's a planning application number to have a look for that. Um, south side of White Road, uh, construction of three apartment blocks, two three-story blocks and one four-story block containing 10 one bedroom flats. There's been issues around uh, curbside parking, footway access and accuracy of plans. Further amendments have been tabled, deleting one of the blocks, so to try and provide more parking. Uh, the report's been drafted for review um, with you know, sort of issues around the parking pedestrian access and highway safety. Uh, Rainbow Industrial Estate, which I think is probably the only issue that predates me in this room. Um, <laughs> non material amendment applications uh, to amend conditions <coughs> as to enable a phased development that have been considered. Um, Various conditions partly signed up relating to phase one, and there's been a recent application submitted for certificates of lawfulness pertaining to implementation. No idea what that is, yeah. uh, but I think that's linked to the ongoing Crossrail 2 discussions yeah. around safeguard. Yeah. Uh, the vacant office block at 2 Amity Grove <coughs> uh, is an application for external alterations to the facade, including cladding. Addition of balconies, reconstruction of plant room on roof, amendments to door and window openings, landscaping and associated works in uh, the uh, and a prior approval for the change of use space. So this is they're changing basically an office to residential units. Uh, Eleven flats for example that. And that permission has been granted. Uh, the land at the rear of two A Amity Grove. Development of open land by erecting uh, three times two storey dwellings. Um, the application is being subject to pre application advice. Uh, it's an ongoing negotiation leading to a scheme that uh, could be supported. Um, but given the level of objections, it's likely to go to either June or July um, committee, the planning applications committee. Uh, 27 to 35 West Barnes Lane. Alterations and extensions to shop units and an extra floor above to create nine flats in the remodeled extended block. Permission was granted there in October 2018. Uh, 80 to 86 Bushy Road. Um, this is the big retail food development. Uh, unoccupied buildings have been demolished, that's at home has been retained, but there's no obvious building activity at the moment. Uh, they're unclear as to how the approved scheme might progress. But a new pre-application has been submitted uh, for 700 dwellings in blocks with 3,600 commercial, I guess that meters, uh, commercial floor space, square foot, square meters. I can't be 3,600 shops. That would be kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and the uh, planning colleagues are meeting with the applicant and with TFL. That. Uh, 32 to 34 Bushy Road, uh, the scheme's amended from 34 to 32 flats, approved by a planning committee in the 15th, on the 15th of November, uh, subject to section 106 for affordable housing and permit free units. Uh, Sunday Bowls Club on Kingston Road, application submitted for minor amendments to approve scheme for nine houses and a new club building. Uh, 641 Kingston Road, the former railway pub, uh, it's an application for a change of use from public house to ground floor retail with nine flats above, uh, including a demolition of existing taxi lodgings. So that's um, pending the completion of section 106. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> I'm sure lots of you already know, but section 106 is. Uh, sort of the agreement that developers have to make with the council uh, about certain things. So affordable housing is often done through what's called the Section 106 agreement, but also uh, certain monies are also given by developers to mitigate the impact of new developments. So there's lots of references to Section 106, but that's just to give you an idea of what that is. Um, not being the people who uh, are the planning officers, we may or may not be able to, to answer any questions, but I'm sure we get feedback from the yeah. other questions. Has anybody got any questions or comments on any of those? Yeah, yeah. can I ask about the manu uh, manu plastic side project? Um, my understanding, correct me if I've got this wrong, 
was that the uh, initial uh, planning application that was granted um, involved uh, uh, a certain uh, amount of uh, affordable housing, but that the revised application with the extra units offers no affordable housing. It's been taken out completely. So is that correct? This is where Section 106 comes in. So the planning commission they have for many plastics is for 99 flats, of which 27 or 28 will be affordable. I can't remember whether it's 27 or 28. They put in two new planning applications, uh, one for 180 flats, uh, one for 124 flats, which are currently um, winding their way through the system at the moment. Uh, now, what they've done with those is they've not put in for any affordable housing element, but their answer to that is, uh, the developer's answer to that is, they expect to have to negotiate with Merton to agree an affordable housing element, so they expect to have to sign a Section 106 agreement which will have a number of affordable housing units in it, which they are hoping will be similar. So a lower, a lower proportion if they get more flats. Um, Surely the proportion should remain the same. It should be higher. It should be higher. It's more flat. It should be higher. Mm. I mean, otherwise that's you're undermining the, the, yeah. the proposal. Yeah. I mean, again, that's, that's their proposal. Yeah. Yes. I'm, not, I'm not seeking to defend that. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. I put, as a ward councillor, I put in my own comments on that and exactly yeah. that point. Yeah. But that's the answer to the question. So they expect there to be yeah. some yeah. affordable. And is the new application open to comments and objections at the moment? I think that is. Is this the 16th in Amazon or the 14th in Amazon? David yeah, well, I didn't know there were two. So, I know that, I know yeah, that okay. Two, yeah. So, one I think is definitely still open. Yeah. It's either open to the 14th or the 16th. Do you just put it in anyway? Because yes. it should still be counted. They often pay. That building on the um, plastic site, that's going to be the biggest building in this area, isn't it? It's very low isn't it? I mean, I live in Stanton Road, the other side of the road, they're going to be. They're, they're applying for an extra yeah. story yeah. at the back of the yeah. 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 I think there's six stories they want to They're of what there is around. Yes, that's why we're fighting against it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've currently got planning permission for five stories, so I guess that whatever oh, happens... It's gone down a story than the last I heard. There's two sides to it. I yeah. think the back was always six, actually. Oh, yeah. the front was well, maybe yeah. the six, the nearest to us. <laughs> yeah. They've certainly applied for an extra story at the back as well, so yeah. it may be that it's seven yeah. then. We have to accept that, do we? I mean, no, we don't. You don't have to accept the extra. You might have to accept what they've already got planning commission for, but you don't have to accept the new yeah. planning yeah. How do these people, sorry, sorry. Can I just say, yeah. how do these people manage to keep these sites vacant? You know, that, this hotel, this railway hotel, it's been derelict for 10 years. Mm -hmm. so some t sometimes mm -hmm. they have enough money. Mm -hmm. Millionaires in property come from taking land which is not for housing and changing the rules yeah. so it's worth 10 times as much and that's what manual plastic it's like a is. land bank it's it? a land bank, yeah. land bank yeah. so so he said to me 10 years ago i'll take as long as necessary yeah. and i will provide you housing but he's fine he's got money uh, others just couldn't sell or couldn't get planning or there were other issues yeah. okay. so you never quite know unless you speak to the individuals their, their main business is self-storage i think the owners of manual plastics yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And rent, rental property, which is what the people be. Uh, sorry, I think it's a question. Silly question, probably. With all the housing, residents, flats, and everything, is provision made for parking, especially in so along there, or are all our roads going to be chock a block even more? Perhaps we could have, you know, parking on top of cars. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I was. We'll, we'll say, as David said before, we're not here to defend no, council policy but, but decisions. But is it is it in the provision made? Quite quite a few of the developments are granted subject to not having parking permits. So where you've got controlled parking, none of those developments would be eligible for a permit. So they're not able to park on those roads. But clearly, if there are roads that aren't controlled parking, mm. that's free for all anyone to park in those spaces anyway. Outside controlled hours. Yes. And mm. um, the manual plastic site, which is one we have been talking mm. about, is unusual in that it does have some parking. It's got 33. Yeah, which are we about 11 that are disabled. Roughly. So, yeah, you have to remember that. Yeah. And they're not linked, they're not actually linked to the individual flats, they're sort of the, the rent um, yeah. on the site. Yeah. Um, but that's relatively unusual, a lot of the new developments in the area uh, are parking free. Um, any, any other questions before we move on? Great. Um, Chris, I think, is going to talk about uh, something that's coming up, which is. Uh, 
I think it's every 20 years or so, um, the Boundary uh, Commission looks again at the number of councillors you have and where they represent, and uh, we're about to get to get that, that fun kind of redrawing of the boundary. So, just so you're aware, and you have the opportunity to put a consultation in, the review, as Anthony is saying, it's, it's the total number of councillors elected in, to the council in the future, the number of wards, the number of councillors representing each ward, the ward boundaries, and the names of the wards. Um, I attended a session in the council looking at this where there were a group of resident associations and so on. And some people were saying, well, why don't we have a ward that covers the whole of Rains Park? Why don't we have a ward that covers the whole of Wimbledon Town Centre and so on? The difficulty of that is you still get outlying areas. So there's no, in my view, there's no 100% solution that's going to meet all, all the requirements. But you can have your say. Um, they say that they're minded to recommend that 57 councillors should be elected in Merton in the future. We currently have 60. And if that went through, it would mean it would change for 2022, I think, isn't it? Um, but basically, you have, can have your say. So if you're interested, you can go to the lgbce.org.uk slash UK, which I had to ask Chris what it stood for. It's Local Government Boundary Commission for England. So if you, if you don't remember the acronym, look up Local Government Boundary Commission for England, and then if you select Merton, on the right hand side there's a drop down, you can select the location mm -hmm. and you can then go in and put your consultation in with your views, whatever that might be. Okay. So it's really information about that. Oh, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? The only thing I would add about it is that, um, that the prime uh, impetus for this is uh, about changing the ratio between councillors and electors. Merton has quite a lot of councillors for the number of people in it, so what they're doing is they're slightly adjusting it so there are fewer councillors uh, to, each, to each elector, fewer shares of councillors, so a fraction of me will go so much further. So is it obviously done population? In electoral, yeah, so it's not the same as population. They do take into account kind of natural communities as well, but the main issue is ratio of councillors to electors. Uh, and there's a whole website if you like playing with it. You can draw fantasy, fantasy boroughs if you're, if you're really into it. Um, people do get into it, they really do. Really what, what you there. can't do is leave Merton and go to Kingston because then you can't move the boundary. And, uh, <laughs> someone did ask. Um, so if that's something that uh, excites you, have a look out for it. Um, I think we're going to move into a discussion of some uh, Rains Park Town Centre developments. I think Tony is going to fix. Um, it's a wet afternoon, so I wrote it all down, really. I thought it better than trying to ad-lib my way through it. So, um, starting off with the south end of Skew Arch, you people remember that, which has been cleaned up. Um, some of the areas taken away, the bins have been taken away, etc., and it's been astroturned. Um, thanks now to Alan Lavender at PAG, we've now got pallets, both plastic and timber, in order to have the basic means of making seating cubes that we actually want to put there, and they'll be sited at the south end. We're proposing to cover the cubes with the artificial grass if we have enough left over from the paving exercise or supplement that uh, with other waterproof wrap. We're going to use the spare artificial grass currently stored with Universal Flooring kindly in Rains Park who've been looking after it for us. So we're going to make a prototype of one of these uh, green boxes. We're using pallets to stack them up because there's no money for seats. We're having to make our own kind of geometric cube which we're going to cover it in grass and see how it works. Uh, assuming it all works, we hope to make around four seats, which we'll locate at the end of the skew arch by the end of June, uh, as this is now a, a pleasant warm area facing south, and, and we hope people may choose to congregate there, so um, we'll, we'll see what happens. So far, we're not sure we need any volunteers to help from the community. The RPA regular volunteers are getting well past their sell-by dates, uh, like us, um, <laughs> so, uh, but if you would be willing, uh, if asked, uh, to lend a hand, please give us your name and contact details at the end of the evening. We haven't actually got a fixed programme yet. Look for the younger people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yes, younger fit people with screwdrivers would be very welcome. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, 
Alan's got some form of binding things together. We'll see whether it works or whether we've got to use glue, screws, whatever, and then we'll see um, how, it, how it functions overall. But we're building hopefully on success. We've, we've got rid of all the hoardings that were there. The bins have gone. The grass has been laid. We're now trying to actually say, instead of just walking through the space, you can actually sit there and talk to people as well. So hopefully our faith in doing it has been good. It's not been vandalised, ripped up. It's been a positive contribution, we hope. So we'll see what happens from there on in anyway. Um, the other one was talking about bins and the skew arch again. Um, that's really slightly been covered, but um, we wanted to get rid of the bins at either end of the skew arch. To say, we got rid of the south end, the north end, there was a, a vote about a year ago, show of hands saying who's keen to get rid of it, because we were fairly sure mm -hmm. it was passing trades rubbish, because residents all get your bins collected for free, and businesses should be paying to have rubbish collected. Mm -hmm. So where was all this rubbish coming from? So hopefully, it's all been cleaned away, as you see now, it's a, a big improvement. You come from Wimbledon to Rains Park, it's no longer a dumping ground for rubbish as you come in, and so far um, it hasn't been a disaster, there's no catastrophes happened. So I think that's sort of um, justified the effort in doing it. There's still recycling facilities at um, Waitrose as well. So overall, we, we hope we've and now enabled that area to be improved. There's two small areas of land we're supposed to be getting hold of from network rail, which um, we haven't really succeeded in six years, have we? I think it's, we're, we're working on it, though. It's going to happen one of these days. So we'll see. That will uh, give us uh, the chance of improving things through that as well. Um, bulb planting was just a comment really. Um, you may have remembered that the Verges had bulbs planted in them uh, in West Barnes Lane and in front of Waitrose, uh, which the Rains Park Association got from grants and we all used the labour to pay for it. If you've seen what the gas works have done to West Barnes Lane, their contractor, that's pretty much trashed it and we're going to probably have to do the job again. So it will be nice, um, again, we'll raise it again properly. We haven't got a programme for autumn planting of bulbs, but I think some of our efforts have been negated by the compacted ground and the, everything else that was dumped in some of these areas. So bulb planting hopefully will be on the agenda for this autumn if people will be willing to um, come along with the trowel. Um, young people who can bend down <laughs> and get up again quickly would be really handy. Because when some of us go down to tie our shoelaces up, we have to look around to see if there's something else we have to do while we're down there. So, um, so if, you, if you're springing your step, that would be really helpful. Um, the, the railway uh, issue, um, after meetings with the RPA and network, well, you may have noticed the improvement on the embankment on the north side of the railway, again, as you come into Rains Park. Further maintenance is proposed this autumn, and some tree surgery is also necessary to safeguard the track. Um, the RPA is seeking to find a way of securing regular maintenance of these visually prominent areas, but at the moment we're not allowed to go onto the embankment land, which is also a candidate for additional bulb planting. It's that frustration where Network Rail says it hasn't got the money to do it, but we are saying, well, let us do it. They say, no, no, health and safety says you can't do it. But there's... there's fencing at the bottom and there's fencing at the top. Where are we supposed to go? <laughs> ah, well, well, we can't answer that at the moment. But anyway, it's, uh, we'll hopefully get out of this stalemate. And so, um, mm. again, that's something we might be able to uh, train people with health and safety approval to go on as well. Um, the last issue I down was improvements in funding. Um, the RPA is meeting Merton officers on the 9th of July to discuss the spending of money raised by the Community Infrastructure Levy uh, and also any money left over from the Section 106 funding. As you just said, Section 106 is a kind of bonus for, that developers sometimes play for gaining planning consent. But it's been replaced also by CIL, which is a community infrastructure levy, which means that everybody pays for it. The, C the Section 106 used to be purely on big schemes, but now there's a far more democratic way of raising the revenue, which helps pay for some of the other benefits. Um, and some of that money is supposed to be given back, but we'll have to touch on that um, as it comes up later in the meeting. Um, the position is slightly confused um, about CIL funding because uh, we suggested, for instance, one of the ways you could spend money was cleaning the linear drains between the cycleway and the footpath along Coombe Lane, um, where the water you know, ponds and freezes in winter and is a slip hazard. Uh, and this was turned down. Um, and you can still see the grass growing out of the gratings in, in the... Um, grills as well. So um, we really need to know what funds are available, how do applicants apply for them, who communicates with whom, and other issues. Um, as the RPA is volunteering all our time for this, we don't want to waste our time in unclear administrative circles, because what we find in some cases, 
We've got grant aid from Tesco's Bags of Hope, and we've made application, and the RPA has created its own funds. But there are some funds only the council can apply for. So we need to know whether we should be supporting the council in making these applications, where the funds are coming from. Um, the communication could be improved, so we know how we can work together on this as well. And that's why we're hoping when we meet with officers on the 9th of July, we get a better steer on this one as well. So um, that's all I think we need to say on the points there. Um, and then on the ward allocation scheme, I think it's over to you, Anthony, to talk about that. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. I just want to say thank you very much to mm -hmm. the Tony and Race Park Association for, for what they're doing at Race Park Centre. Has anyone got any questions or comments for the association? And where's the skewer? <laughs> it's, it's the arch under the railway just across the road from here. It's the one that goes under at an angle. Yeah. Well, with the side um, lane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, with okay. the side lane. Yeah. It was the was the road under the railway line. Mm. Oh, Before the new one was built. I think it was one way. Yeah, it wasn't big enough to take a bus. Well, the benches will be this side, will they? They'll be on the south side, which yes. is the south side. Yeah, this side. Thank you. Yeah. 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 If you're right, I can get the. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. well, one thing, Tony, said so utilities are meant to put back uh, the same as they, they found to start with. But you do have to push the council to manage that. So if they've dug up the flowers, or taking things where they have to put them back. Mm. And it's, three um, rooms. Well, yes, yeah. I, mean, I mean, thank you for that. I mean, the, the problem was, it's, um, they weren't digging them up, they were just uh, trampling all over the grass yeah. and compacting it. So we yeah. couldn't prove, as it were, you killed a bulb underneath, it's just that they didn't come up. And <laughs> what the frustration was, that if none of the trees were protected, and the pavings and, and material was dumped on top of it as well, so we raised this query to say, if you were doing this on a normal construction site under planning, you'd stop people doing it. There was a, a British standard about trees of construction. So how come KLT and the gas board were allowed to actually trash everything? And, and nobody, nobody said anything to criticise them. So we wrote to the council to say, are you happy with what KLT doing on the basis that the council I'd say no, in which case we say, well, what are you doing about it? Or they'd have to say yes. We said, well, why do you write such crappy specifications? <laughs> Let them do it. And, uh, but we got no reply because, in a way, they couldn't. They were going to be dead whichever way they replied. Really. So it's frustrating. I mean, the trees are all living now, but of course the grass is now that high because it hasn't been cut either. So um, it's just frustrating that a lot of efforts gone on by a lot of volunteers to try and improve these things, and it's been sort of trashed in front of our eyes, really. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on Main Park Town Centre? If not, I will move on to um, something which sounds deeply dull. Um, I'm going to try and make it sound a bit more interesting. So, you've heard tonight people talk about Section 106, the community infrastructure levy, things like that. And the ward allocation scheme is, is linked to that. But what it actually is, is £15,000 of money from the council, actually from developers through the community infrastructure levy that ward councillors are allowed to spend on a very, very limited number of things in their wards. So if you here tonight will be from Rains Park, you might be from Dundonald Ward, my ward, you might be from, from Cannon Hill Ward, um, your council, your councillors, or three councillors in your area, will be able to decide between themselves to spend this £15,000 on some things. And what hopefully they will do is they will ask you your opinion on what you want it spent on, uh, and they will take that into account. Now, the three councillors have to act unanimously. Um, we have to then apply to the council with a form um, from their list of 12 things that we're allowed to, to use this money for. And this £15,000 has to last us until uh, the next three years. Um, so we can spend it all in one go, or we can spend it so much a year, or some combination thereof. Now, we can work with councillors in other wards to have slightly bigger things as well. So it's quite complicated. Uh, and it's quite faffy and it seems quite bureaucratic, but at the end of the day, it's some extra money to spend on some improvements. And this might go towards some of, could possibly go towards some of the things the Range Park Association are trying to do. Also, it might not, it might go to other things. And what I'm going to do is uh, hand out or ask that people hand out this, which is the council's list of things we're allowed to spend the money on. Um, I'm going to ask you to take a look at it in your own time. Get in touch with your councillor, tell them what you think, where you think it should be done. Um, they're primarily bits and pieces about smartening up the area. So there's nothing massive. Um, it's bulb planting, it's sinking gates and fences, 
it's tidy and synced up. Um, but it's money that we might as well spend in fifty So please do get in touch and um, get in touch with your council. Um, and if there aren't enough to go around, it's on the website. No, it's not on the website. But I can attach it because we can attach it to the minutes, and also your council should have a copy as well. Um, and so I've rushed to the 45 minutes waiting on the meeting, but if you have any questions about that, please do ask me David and I, and sure we'll find an answer. I think the, the, our, our confusion there was, because the range park is very active in <coughs> the part of it, but we're not in the loop, because the range park doesn't cover one ward, so the communication doesn't come from the RPA at all. So although we've got ideas which we coordinate of how those, that money could be spent, we're not in the communication. So, so what, what if we agree that one councillor or all councillors from the board present to RPA, you watch what ideas that come up, and then you can get your opinion in? That would be, that would, well, I say, the, the, the RPA is obviously representing various so, so residents, not so necessarily wards, so we, it would be so good that we can coordinate all better, I think. So you can invite all of us, yeah. and um, one, each board at least, should come. Mm. But, but there are lists around, just yeah. depending on which ward it is, yeah. of, of ideas. But it seemed to be if it was at one ward's money was underspent, it couldn't be used by another ward, because that would seem to be unfair. Let's, let's yeah. have the meeting. The yeah. scheme is a new, so it's a different scheme last year. This is a new scheme, so right. it's slightly different. And not to be too confusing about it, there's also something called the Neighbourhood um, Fund, which is for bigger projects which has just had a round of, of applications as well, which yes. might be confusing. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other questions on that before we, before we move on? Great, fantastic. In which case then, I will ask Simon to talk about the bundle plan. Hello, my name is Simon Gregg uh, from In Town Markets and I run Farmers Markets in London. And I've been talking with Chris and Julie, uh, about opening a farmer's market in Rains Park. So the idea is to bring fresh produce to the town centre and create a local community hub. So farmer's markets tend to attract uh, a lot of families um, and a lot of uh, a cross-section of society, including uh, more elderly individuals as well, who appreciate the fresh produce. Uh, they're very popular, and they bring in footfall. They just drag it in, especially if you have an element of hot food there as well. Um, they're very popular. They're generally well-received. Um, so I've come here to uh, tell you that we're hoping to open one maybe over the summer, or possibly September. We're still looking at all the options, but there are complications surrounding it. As I'm sure you'll all be aware, Rains Park can be very complicated when it comes to deciding who owns what and <laughs> with metric rent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ch challenging. Um, and so th there is a lack of clarity, which uh, um, nobody seems to be quite sure of, of the answers. And so, so that has created a delay for us. Um, otherwise, I think we'd be looking to be up and running almost straight away. Um, I've recently opened the uh, Village Farmers Market in Wimbledon um, with the support of the Wimbledon Village Business Association. And that's been very popular and it's been very successful and it's not attracted any criticism. And we brought in footfall into the village, onto the high street which they say they desperately needed. Um, in fact, they, the chairman told me, of the WBA, told me on Sunday at the market uh, that he felt it was the most successful project that they'd been involved with in the history of the organisation. So nobody, no other traders have anything to fear. It does bring in extra footfall. It has been successful. It has worked. And it creates a lovely community hub. And it's fun. It's a destination. It's something that puts a flag on, on Rains Park where people will know about it. Um, again, we're, there, we're looking to be able to, for people to be able to fill a shopping basket. So you can go and get your bread, your meat, your eggs, um, your milk, uh, fresh veg, fruit. Uh, we tend to target farmers who are within 30 miles, ideally, but that's not that realistic all the time. So uh, 40 miles, a lot of them come from Kent. 
uh, is not unreasonable. We do have some come from further afield, but that's if they're interesting in their particular uh, and we just want them there to add to the market. Uh, we do add some other interesting, about, about 85 to 90% are primary sellers, which means they make the product and will produce the product themselves and they actually sell it on the day. But I, I allow about 10 to 20% to be secondary sellers. So for example, um, I have an individual who, who sells salmon and he buys it from a source, but he creates a pate out of it, a beautiful pate, which is actually his strength. Uh, and he's considered to be a secondary seller. So I allow them to come in because it brings in some variety. The important thing is to have diversity and to have it as a hub that attracts people. Uh, we haven't yet settled on, um, on a fixed site pitch as yet um, because of the complications, but we're hoping to be, it does need to be visual. I, I do know that, J Julie assured me that, that there, there aren't uh, deep lulls during the holiday periods in Rains Park um, but that is a, a concern and I think we need to be very visual um, in order to keep the foot flow it, it's one thing to have awareness where everyone knows that you have a farmer's market in the area, it's another to actually get people to come along and keep coming along because we want a good farmer's market, we don't want one that's just, you know, just struggling along and it's okay, we want a good one and to have that you, you need to be visible Otherwise, it's time. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's a year, it's two years to build up. Um, at least that, that's my view. But I'm, I'm perfectly open to, to any questions or any queries that anyone has. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can talk to you later. Okay, <laughs> just tell people whether it's going to be weekly or monthly. Oh, Saturday. sorry, yes. Well, that, what day of the week? We thought we said Saturday. We, we did say Saturday, yes. I think, people think that's a good idea. Yeah, I, Saturday is a day where, where you are competing with... Um, a lot of family activities. Uh, but the spend does come from the older generation. But it is fun for families to come along. Um, so Saturday is the day that, that we set on. I think the high streets, I, I don't know, you have to be corrected. I think the high streets are a bit busier on a Saturday. Yeah, most of the shops are open on Saturday. Yeah, Something shops are open on Saturday. Saturday, so that they get the benefit yeah. of the footfall, etc. Exactly, yeah. Yes, and, and we were talking about um, from 10 till 2, but it may be from 9 till 1. It, it, it depends, because some areas, they, the, the market just dies after 1 o'clock. Everyone's off doing their own thing. In some areas, the market doesn't come alive till, you know, till, you know 10 o'clock. So you, you, just, you just can't tell. So we will, we will uh, juggle that slightly. But, but we're looking for a four-hour window, uh, preferably in the morning, on a Saturday, on a weekly basis. And that's another reason why we need to be really visual, is rather than being monthly is to, to keep it weekly, you, you, you know, you, you have to hit the ground running. Where's the one in Wimbledon Village? Ah, yes, good question. Now let me give you a flyer if you want one. Um, it's, in the, it's in the doctor's surgery. Oh, that's, that's nice. brilliant. That's yes, handy. yes. It, but it's quite a small, it's quite a small market. Um, yes, and that, that's fairly new. And, and it, it's very popular. Um, and and you know, the, the space in Rains Park it is limited. There's, there isn't you know, lots of available space. And the same is true with Wimbledon Village. And it creates a real atmosphere. Uh, tabletop trading as well as gazebo. So... Yes, Robert Holmes opposite Hobbs, near Matches. Um, yes, yeah. You, you know that the pet shop on the high street, there's just the, the pet shop that's there. And then just around the corner, if you come just around the corner, we're just, we're just uh, in one of the coves there. Uh, it's quite a tight space, but it's fun. And we're, last weekend we had our busiest weekend. Mm. It, was a, it was a really strong footfall. Uh, and I do the exit interviews, and, and you know, it, it's just very popular. I was at a residence meeting last night, actually. They asked me to come and talk about it. So. Our local business is allowed to participate. For example, we've got a small food shop. Um, would be that Absolutely. See? At Wimbledon Village, um, we have included, so a, an example of uh, where I've uh, um, made allowances, for instance, is that we have uh, G Like Gelato from Wimbledon Town Centre. He makes his own ice cream, uh, beautiful ice, ice cream. It really is artisan, although he doesn't call it that. He comes along. We have Valet Bona, uh, produce their own product. They're local businesses. Um, they come along. We have a handful of local businesses um, who, who come along. So, so we, we welcome that. The, the, the motto, if you like, is fresh and local. 
So I want <laughs> local traders there. That's that's okay, important. That's what I encouraged you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, because, why, uh, that's why I think it's a good idea. Yes, yeah. fresh and, and local. It is important, and I think the locals like to come along. The community likes to come along, and the local traders are, are to be honest with you, they spend a lot of time chatting with friends who are coming into the market. So, but it creates a nice atmosphere, you know, it, and, and it creates a family. And you're on two sides of Rains Park, because you're on this side, aren't you? Yeah, and yeah. people don't necessarily know where you are, yeah. you're this side, so the whole thing, all, I think, could be great. But also, I, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't have a fishmonger here, do you? Used to, but you so, so, you no know, butcher, I, no butcher, no fishmonger. I've already yeah. discussed it with, with my fishmonger the, he, and explained the location, because one of the other issues is traders want to go to busy locations. They just want to arrive and see it's busy. Uh, and he's actually a fisherman, so uh, he catches the fish during the week and then he brings it to market at the weekend. Now, I've, I've mentioned Rains Park and he said, book me in, I'm, I'm there, it's done. So, and, and Chegworth Valley have said, and he, he, he heard me talking to the, the fisherman and he came over and said, is that a new market? I said, well, we're working on it. And he said, well, book me in too. <laughs> so, so, so what hurdles has to explain your preferred location? Yes, my preferred location is... Um, in the cattle arch and either side of it at the station because it's very visible. Um, it does link, the, I believe it links the two sides. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on anything because I'm not, I'm not an expert. And then that makes it really visual. It just keeps it visual and it, it allows the, the market to keep that momentum. Uh, which is what's the probability of this happening? Is it quite sort of... Like Look, I'd, I'd be doing it in two weeks' time. I'm, well, I wanted to do it for the 22nd, but they have you know... Um, Obviously, we need to talk to the, the council, and I, I am talking to them, and they are doing what they can. Their resources are limited. They can't just, as, as David tells me, I, I can't do what Simon wants me to do all week long. So, you know, he has to do his other, his other roles as well. And they are making some changes to their trading rules, which uh, he said, look, maybe that'll pass. He said this to me two weeks ago. Maybe that'll pass through next week. Maybe it'll be six weeks. But he's my contact, and everyone's spiralling off him and talking to him, to me, because that seemed to be the most sensible way to approach it. But I'll let you, I'll let you, you and everybody else know, raise your heart, yeah, that's the mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Sounds very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a period, as this is a, a new venture, is there a period, a sort of gestation period, when the, this is going to work, and obviously it's not maybe starting off flying, as it were, but where you think this isn't going to happen now, you know, where people say the trade isn't there or something, how, how long can we expect it to be at this initial period to make sure we get it started? Really? Well, obviously, um, I, um, I want to, to enter into this project believing that it's, it's going to have sustainability. Yeah. But if it didn't, I'd say uh, six to eight weeks, you'd have a very good idea. Right. Um, but if it's supported by the local community, and they do need to be supported by the local community. And also, Tony, Simon's going to do some new people coming in, aren't we, Simon? It's not going to be the yeah. same people each week, right? No, 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 we do. So, yeah, it, so it's important to rotate it to keep it in. We'll have a core. So, for instance, the bread would be core, um, because the customers, um, they like to know that they're going to get that bread uh, yeah. at the weekend. And uh, the, the veg will, be, will remain um, consistent, and we'll have more than one veg. Yeah. Um, so that they know they can go and get the veg. This particular veg is going to be here. Yeah. But it it's, uh, makes it more interesting and fun to create some newness um, and, and you know, have some rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was only asking, because my, my, uh, the, 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 um, the farmer's market in Barnes is actually in the back of what was my late father-in-law's doctor's surgery. But yeah. it, took, it took a while to get kind of going. And so yes. I, I think hopefully, I just don't want us to give up on it too early. We, you know, we need to obviously yes. invest our spending and time and everything on it to make sure it takes off. Yes, yeah. but there, there are certain traders who are willing to do that because right. once they've got, once they're in yeah. and they're there, they know that they're locked in if they've been there from the beginning. Right, good. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I, I've just I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about parking. I like the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where anybody who isn't already here, who comes in from outside the way, where are they going to park? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, farmers markets do tend to attract locals. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it tends to be for. Um, it's not intending to drag people from up the A3 or wherever else it happens to be and that we're going to have a big parking issue. Um, again, I'm not hugely familiar with the parking in, in Wren's Park, but I don't see that as a problem because it's going to be drawing on families and locals. 
I mean, it's not. Coming by the station, of course, don't they? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, no, it sounds brilliant. It sounds very exciting. And so you were saying, obviously, the council have got some. So what are the what are the obstacles that they're putting in your way? And is it, as a community, could we sort of help you and say, look, we're all really behind you? Would that make a difference, or you know what I mean? That would make a difference for you know. sure. Definitely so if you had like I don't know, like a survey monkey or something, or like a yes, it's it, a, you know that's I mean? a good idea. You I know, think, but it's because it'd be brilliant because it would really wake up the area. I mean, yeah. their shop is brilliant. I love their shop. You know, they do great quiches and. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we, quiche sells so well at farms as well. Yeah. Picnic food does so well. Yeah, so um, but but um, it's not so much that they're, um, that they're purposely putting obstacles in the way. Uh, what has happened is, uh, I am extending the Wimbledon Village Market as well, mm. and uh, they've said, okay, all right, so uh, we've got market activity in the borough. We need to re-examine how yeah. markets are operated in the borough. Um, and that requires two or three different departments um, just to, to come to consensus. So uh, it's an admin, it's an admin issue rather than uh, the council dra dragging their feet in the sense of we don't want to do it because they are supportive. And actually the extension of Wimbledon Village has been approved. Mm. But we're just waiting on this confirmation mm. as to how operate. This would be so good for Rains Park. It would really I hope so. revive the area. Yeah. I hope so. You know, I hope really so. Good. Yeah. Well, I, I want to draw people out of their houses and get yeah. them out onto the high street mm. and have a reason to do that. Mm. And actually, um, actually, just just hot food, fun hot food, mm. um, is is something you know something a bit different. Um, does do that. Um, it, it does get the footfall. Get an umbrella seller as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is there any, anything else? That, oh, you, so hopefully you'll be getting something that looks a bit like this, but it'll say rain's part through your door. Don't put it in the bin, put it on the fridge. So lots of people put it on the fridge. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. I'm hoping that some of you have seen our program for the Moray yeah. Park Festival. So I see lots of nods going on. If you haven't got one, um, I will leave some on the table, so please take one before you leave. Um, just a, a few details, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's taking place 28th of June, it starts. Um, so we have nine days through to the 7th of July. We have 15 events happening over that time, which a variety of things from a pub quiz at the Edward Rain, we've got a couple of comedians coming in, in a couple of restaurants, in, in Sai Restaurant and Ormeda over here. Um, we've got some events for kids, we've got something here in the library, a storyteller coming. Um, we've even got some swing dance. Anyone do any swing dance? Um, I'm not sure we do probably do swing dance. Uh, we have, I'm quite excited about our poetry event, which always happens in Love and Die, and the hairdressers there, and it's always popular. But what's particularly good is the lady who's uh, we've booked to come, Teresa Lola, who, who is a poet. She, um, she's just been made the Young People's uh, Poet Laureate since we booked her, so we think it's to be well. So no idea. So she would definitely be worth coming along, also local poets will be doing that. And um, the, the big sort of thing that we finish on is we have a, a, a fun day, really. We call it Lark in the Park. It's up in Holland Gardens. It's going to be lots of entertainment. We're praying for good weather. And uh, it was really popular last year. It's great growing it every year. So if you're around, you have, please come along. We've got all sorts of things going on about that. So we start 28th of June. And uh, please look at the programme, please pot it on, talk to your neighbours about it, all of that would be fantastic because I always, fit, I mean, we've, this, is, this is our ninth year and uh, every year it goes, it's been pretty good, it keeps building, but um, I, it comes to the end, I think it would be even better if a few more people came along and I feel like we miss out sometimes um, by not engaging as much as I, I wish we could. So, and people always tell me, how, oh, I didn't hear about it or whatever. So it's going to take us all to spread the word, so uh, please, please pass on 
uh, that information. And you mentioned the Christmas festival. Can we leave that till September? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. Yeah, we'll Thank you. you. <laughs> I'll be back. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm very conscious we've got a few uh, multifaceted agenda items uh, left when we've got 25 minutes. Does anyone have any questions to, to Nick? In which case, we're going to move to business issues, and there's two bits to this. There's uh, Tony, who's going to talk about the local business group, and then Chris is going to talk about business rates. Um, do you want to? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I think as we, we've already explained that, that um, the RPA, which meets regularly um, at 6.30 in, in Rains Park, is an association representing associations. And businesses are welcome, but attendance is reduced, and the business voice is very limited now. The RPA also collaborates with the Merton Chamber of Commerce to hold business breakfast at 8 a.m. in the morning, where businesses raise issues, etc. And um, there are various items that, that are brought up for people, such as security and planning matters. Uh, our MP Stephen Hammond, who is here as well, um, uh, attended the last meeting and was raising issues about businesses and high streets and others. Um, I'm sure Stephen can expand on that. I don't need to paraphrase what he was saying. Um, but the RPA, obviously, and there's these forums that the RPA participates in as well. But we, the RPA was concerned that the business voice was not being effectively heard clearly enough. As we're aware, councillors are elected by residents, they're not elected by businesses. So businesses have no vote and no political voice, and there's a form of democratic deficit in this when high streets are under considerable pressure and with empty uh, shops appearing. So, um, as we know, Rains Park has got Barclays Bank has gone, and if you're aware, Lloyd's Bank is closing in September. So that will be August. Yes. So, so effectively, Rains Park will have no high street banking left at all. So. Um, change is happening in front of our eyes and we're all aware of the pressure on our retail areas. So the RPA invited a small group of business owners and managers to a preliminary meeting to ask if there was an interest in improving the profile of Rains Park businesses. Um, this was in the reality of a business environment and the virtual reality in social media, so it's a, a physical presence as well as communication as well. Um, from this meeting it was felt that further ideas and discussion should be generated and the Babylon Cafe has offered to host a meeting for businesses on the evening of the 9th of July, and that's strictly for local businesses. Uh, there's no fixed or predetermined outcomes, but there is a recognition that Rains Park is not immune from the pressures on high streets, and ideas are needed to maintain the vitality and the very existence of our valued shopping areas. Um, this is really a work in progress, but the RPA just wanted to let you know what it is doing to improve communication and support ideas that can help keep Rains Park a viable location for businesses of all types. So it's work in progress. Thank you. Chris, do you want to speak to... Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, if I may, I'd like to bring in the parking issue as well. I mean, my, my view is that unless we try and do something positive to help local businesses, and for those who don't know, I used to be chairman of an IT holding company opposite where Costas are, uh, which has now been sold to another business. But I don't know if you're aware that now the business rates are collected by the council and they're retraining, retaining part of that money. Uh, but they also have the option to give some of it back or reduce the business rates that uh, small businesses are, are paying. So um, the reason I'm raising this is, first of all, businesses like you should be aware of that and we need to try and get the Rains Park Association, I would suggest, to lobby on your behalf to try and claw back some of that funds to try and help you. But also residents can do the same thing. Talk to your councillors and try and persuade them to make sure that the council, in their budget decisions, uh, which come around in March, um, allow funds to be put aside to help local businesses. So that's my main theme, and linked with that <coughs> is the parking issue, um, which I'm, why I'm bringing on to the next item. We have submitted on behalf of the Range Park Association uh, a comment to the council about the parking uh, proposals that were put on. And as you probably know, it's been deferred. The cabinet has realized that uh, there's so many objections. So if you're not aware about all this, but I'm just gonna summarize what I said at the end. 
we suggest that residents' parking permits, in the interest of fairness, be the same cost regardless of which part of the borough one lives. And if you realise that the cost of permits were more expensive here than they were in Mitcham and Morden, and that they increase in proportion with inflation and the actual cost of managing the service. Now, there's quite a sudden hike, which I think is unreasonable. And it should be automatically renewed by direct debit. I don't know about you, but I've been caught with a parking permit because I forgot the date my permit renewed, and I promptly got three £60 fines, or whatever it was at the time. But I don't understand. You have direct debits for, uh, for garden waste and other things. Why can't they do it for um, uh, parking permits? And dealing, you know, it would save the staff a lot of time. I don't know if you know, if anybody's, does everybody have a parking permit? Most of you do. You have to apply for permission, then they send you an email or call you and give you a code, and you've got to log on again. It's so irritating, and I've, I've worked in IT for years, that they've got to find a simpler solution to do with that. But furthermore, I don't feel that we ought to have a paper permit anymore. Why do we need paper? You know, you've got recognition systems that can use the number plates. So why can't the uh, parking attendants go around with a scanner and check the number plates? It's not no, state of the it, art, it it's available. Um, but, you know, more especially, the business parking permits are extortionate. Yeah. Mm. I think you're talking, if you wanted a borough-wide one, you're talking about £1,000. Uh, I realise that a lot of the smaller businesses don't need that, but if you're a business that, I don't know, if you're competing with Dynarod, for example, I can't think of a name in this area, but if they're going all over the, uh, the area, they would need a probably borough-wide one. So we've got to find ways and lobby council, the council and the council, as I suggest, to try and help the businesses and make sure that they survive. Otherwise, Range Park is going to die. But um, I know Stephen gave a very eloquent speech, which you referred to earlier at uh, the um, uh, breakfast meeting. I don't know if you, would you mind if he raised that? Say anything on that, Stephen? Well, yeah, I do observe that. Actually, um, and I actually think that Chris is being rather kind to the local council. <laughs> Because this is actually this is a really important issue, uh, because notwithstanding the changing nature of high streets and notwithstanding how um, we all want to see air pollution uh, and environmental issues change, the parking charges that Chris was referring to um, have a direct impact uh, on high streets. It's not just the resident parking; it's the charges that give you charge people to park in certain areas. And frankly, it's a tax on Rains Park as a tax on Wimbledon. And my line is, I'm very happy to support measures that we'll see, uh, which will be good for the environment, but frankly, this isn't one of them. And actually, what we want is thriving high streets. I mean, they may be changing high streets, they may not be what you've seen before, but all of us who live in yeah, Rains Park, Wimbledon Village, Wimbledon, Wimbledon Park, more than even a town centre. One of the problems is the council has never worked out what its parking policy should be. Actually, for the sake of giving, in some areas, there's only, you're only allowed to park for two hours. If I speak to the local businesses, they say, if any people would park, park for three hours, it would be a different. So I think this is a really important issue. You know, parking comes up a lot, um, but actually, it is the lifeblood allowing footfall through a village, uh, and Rains Park may or may not be a village, but actually is a thriving local area. And we, we should be doing things to support it. So, a bit like Chris said, I, I'm really keen that you should all get on and actually tell the local council, actually we don't want these parking charges to come in. Happy to pay whatever pay for being paid across the borough. Happy to support, actually. You want to reintroduce, introduce a low emission charge? A low emission zone? Fine, let's do that. But let's be clear about what this, this is nothing to do with lowering emissions. This is charging you, local residents, more money because they regard you and all other parts of this, this part of the constituency to pay for the other side of the constituency, uh, the other side of the borough. Let's be brutally frank about it. And it's going to hurt you and where you live. And it's going to hurt the rest of the world. Um, so, 
Sorry. I try to, I, I, I try, I mean, I don't think it's appropriate to be particularly political about these things, but let's be clear about it. You have a chance to register your opinions. I urge you all strongly to register your opinions because it will mean whether your local community, your local high street, and your local area thrives or not. Just quickly, I mean, I can't understand why the council charged, say, 400 for a business person who has to come here in a van or something, and then say, uh, at the moment, it's 60 pounds for a resident. It just doesn't make sense. The same size, you know, space. It's just uh, too much to charge for a small business. I just never understood that. Well, that may be true, but I mean, what I'm really objecting to at the moment is the fact that a huge increase in the permit. Oh, yeah, that being exactly and that's going to be the real yeah. killer. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's been a lot of um, uh, outrage, I think, is, is not too uh, polite a word for it, in, in the sense of this side of the borough. And there's been the reason that these, we talked about these at the last community forum, the reason that this, has been, this decision has been delayed is there's been over 3,000 responses to the consultation, and they're taking a little more time uh, to think about it. Um, we can't all stay around it. They're still taking the time, which shows at least something that has shaken them a bit. Um, Sorry, can I just... Yes, do you have anything further to add? And then I think Tony's Sorry, I just wanted to say, I was referring earlier to the Boundary Commission. I don't know if you're aware that in the City of London, it's the only area in the country has a different election system. There, residents vote, but also businesses get a vote as well, according to how many employees they have. Maybe in your submission to the Boundary Commission, you ought to suggest that... That is something we ought to have passionately, rather than just. I think that requires legislation rather than a boundary It requires primary legislation. If you don't ask, you won't get anywhere. Maybe the government can find some time in its its busy agenda. After October, possibly after October, they may have more or less time on their hands. Sorry. No, just this overlaps parking and the the other business side as well, because this is from the application for a business, which is applying for. a business parking permit, it says that business parking permits will not be issued for normal working needs for employees or business clients. Now you can understand, you, know, you say your workers better come here by public transport, but if your clients are going to come in a car and you're not going to get a, a permit to allow them to park, whilst Merton is trying to say it's a business friendly environment, mm. you can see there's a sort of slight dichotomy mm. appearing here. If we still want businesses to survive, not enabling their clients to come by car to visit them when they may have to bring things or carry things as well. I, I doubt they make the same, same demands on teachers to say, why don't teachers all go to school walking or cycling? You know, like, you can't have one rule for one sector of the community and one rule for another. Either we need our cars or we don't. There's also the, the council's own fleet and employees that it should look at as well, which is something that councillors may be raising. Um, as a random aside, uh, I gave directions to a crane driver the other day in Rains Park. I was very disappointed that he didn't didn't train. Crane. Oh, crane. Crane. <laughs> <laughs> very disappointed that he didn't come in his crane. Uh, he was on a bus. Um, so there we go. Um, does anyone have, uh, in the last few minutes, does anyone have any comments? As I say, we did talk about parking quite a lot last time. Um, does anyone have any further comments or mm-hmm. observations on that uh, before we move into... Circular, any other business? We started with any other business and what ended any other oh, can I, can I, If you ask for an observation, yes. when, we, when the CPZs were determined, I think everyone agreed that what was trying to be avoided was the long term commuter parking. So that was the thing. And there are more imaginative ways of doing that than banning people from 8.30 in the morning <laughs> to 6.30 at night. There's ways in which you can say only residents parking between 10 and 11 or 11 and 12. If you look at the way it's done, in, in, through Wandsworth, in Battersea and Clapham. They have this rolling wave of people checking on things, and they're using uh, phone apps and all the rest of it as well, not paper, to check on the way that things are working. Because it's very frustrating for a business to find that somebody can't park, and there are areas where the residents have all gone. You know, there, there's a residents only, but there's actually huge swathes of areas where somebody could park and go to a business meeting. And I think it's time to revisit some of the mechanics so we understand what the community is looking for, which is avoiding commuters being parking outside your car at your home all day. But there are more imaginative ways of doing and that making a complete blanket to the detriment of business opportunities as well. Yeah, completely agree. And um, you, the new permit charges are based on how long the hours are as well. So mm. you've got 
log hours like the middle of the town centre, yeah. um, you pay more yeah. than if you've got one. Yeah. Um, any more comments or questions? On if I could just say, Chairman, I think you've done a brilliant job uh, keeping us on time. With, uh, <laughs> very long with them, with <laughs> um, thank you very much, everyone, for coming and everyone who's spoken. Uh, with the office of the thing, Chris, um, and Chris for, for chairing in the Race Park Association. And uh, our next dates are the 19th of September and the 5th of December. So hopefully we'll see you all then. And I'm sure parking will come back. Thank you very much.